Praise the Lord. How are you today, my people? It's so good to be here again. Praise the Lord. God is good. And I pray the love of God will continue to be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching. Today, by God's grace and by the help of the Holy Spirit, what we're going to be learning at the feet of Jesus is about the scripture. Praise the Lord. Is the scripture contradictory? Is it contradictory? Is it confusing? Praise the Lord. I know there are so many people out there that are saying, oh, the Bible is contradictory. The Bible is confusing. And to them, it's, it's just a hard knot. It's a hard knot for them to crack. Praise the Lord. The, the, the scripture is spirit and it's life. Praise the Lord. But to those who do not walk in the spirit, it is just letters. That's why Jesus says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. When we read the scripture by the spirit, then we'll be able to understand the mystery because the, the word of God is a mystery. The Bible says mystery is the doctrine of godliness. Praise the Lord. And this scripture teaches us about godliness. But to those who are believe, who are walking in obedience, who are walking in the spirit, the scripture, the mystery, Jesus says, for you, the mystery has been given, the mystery of the kingdom, to understand the spiritual things. Praise the Lord. So we are going to look at some scriptures and see what is the scripture? How is the scripture reading? We need to know all this to really know if it's contradictory. Is it, is it confusing? Praise the Lord. Second Peter 1.21 says, let me open to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. It says, For prophecy never came by the will of man, but only men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So the only men Holy men were moved by the Holy Spirit to write the scripture, the prophecies. Praise the Lord. Let's also look at um, 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture is given. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Praise the Lord. It is inspired by God. Praise the Lord. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Praise the Lord. So we could see that the, the scripture, that is both Old and the New Testament, they are inspired by God. Praise the Lord. So God is the author of the scripture. And it is meant to correct us, to reprove us, to teach us about righteousness, about godliness, so that we'll be perfect. Praise the Lord. But some people are confused and like it's contradictory. So why would something that God has ordained God has um, inspired to correct us, to reprove us, to make us perfect, to make us complete, to do every good work. Why would that thing be contradictory or confusing? No, God is not uh, the author of confusion, so something must be wrong somewhere. For instance, let me give us some examples 
of scripture that we might say, oh, it's confusing. Like when you even talk of salvation, the Bible says the gospel is has the power to save. Is the power of God for, uh, unto salvation for those who believe. And it is foolishness for those who do not believe. It is foolishness for some people. They, they can't understand it because it's spiritual. Praise the Lord. Let's, ask, let's look at um, the Proverbs. Let's see Proverbs. In Proverbs, the Bible says, and this is one of the examples of some of the area people might say, oh, this is confusing. Let's look at Proverbs. Proverbs 26, 4 to 5. It says, do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Praise the Lord. The next verse, 5, it says, Answer a fool according to his folly, huh? lest he be wise in his own eyes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The day I read the scripture, I was like, Seriously? Don't answer a fool according to his folly. Then the next verse said, Answer a fool according to his folly. You're like, What? Praise the Lord. Yes, to our, somebody who is just um, not working in the spirit, you can't understand this. It is too deep. It is a spirit. The Bible says the secret things belong to God. God wrote the scripture. So it is only him that can interpret it. Yes, it's not of any personal interpretation. That's what the scriptures say. It's not of any private interpretation. Praise the Lord. It is not. Let's look at 1 Peter 1.20. It says that, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Hallelujah. But today, you know, Christianity has become privatized. <laughs> like business center <laughs> yes people are now having privatized faith privatized Christianity so that's why it's confusing to many people and it's contradicting the problem is we not with God praise the Lord not with God you see many people don't want to seek God the writer of the scripture, the inspirer of the, of, of the scripture. They just want to, you know, use their human knowledge to interpret the scripture and do whatever they please. Praise the Lord, but it's not done that way. Let's look at the uh, apostle in Acts. The apostle, let's see what they committed themselves to doing. In Apostle chapter 6, when they were having issue in the church about the widow um, distributing food to the widow, in verse 2, then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Praise the Lord. So they said it's not desirable for us to leave the word of God and then be doing business. Just serving table, administration, welfare. No. So they chose seven deacons to do that. Praise the Lord. You know, delegating authority in the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at verse 4. Of chapter 6 Acts, it says but we will give ourselves continually amen the, the apostle says they said they will give themselves continually but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world praise the Lord 
continually to prayer and ministering of the word. Like how many pastors has time to really seek the Lord in prayer and you know studying the word of God? Today, how many they give themselves to the ministry of the word, studying the word diligently, praying over it, allowing the Holy Spirit to give them interpretation. Praise the Lord. So for we to be able to understand the deep meaning of the scripture, the sacred things of the scripture, the mysteries of the uh, scripture, we need to go to God to prayer. When you, there are so many times I've studied the scripture and I, I don't get it. And I'll be asking the Holy Spirit, what's the meaning of this? Sometimes it doesn't come immediately. I will have to like wait, be patient. And um, sometimes it will just come home. Praise the Lord. So we need to be people of prayer. Studying the word of God on the order, altar of prayer. Altar of prayer. Fire. Then the Holy Spirit begins to open our eyes to the understanding of the scripture. But what do you have today? We have we use human wisdom. We 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 we, we do not wait upon the Lord. We rather interpret it according to how it pleases us. The Bible says in the last days men we have itchy ears. So we take the sweet part of it and we leave the others. So we don't wait in prayer to get the true interpretation, the truth of this word. We are too impatient, you know, instant, microwave interpretation. Literary, we use literary means to interpret the scripture. Praise the Lord. Some people think, oh, let me go to the seminary. When I get to the seminary, I'll be able to learn about the scripture. I had that mistake too. I went to the seminary. The Lord led me to the seminary. And um, my goodness, I went to this, my class, the, the, the boringest, I mean, the most boring class in my seminary training during my class, uh, school in the seminary was the hermeneutics interpretation, interpretation class, Bible interpretation. Oh, it was the most boring. Why was it boring? Because is they are using literary means of I study English in my first degree, so I've done a lot of literary criticism. Yes, in English, English language, English literature. So I've done a lot of that literary criticism. And I was shocked when I came to the seminary, the same thing. I was like, no, this is boring. Uh, I don't want to go through this again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, well, it was a boring class for me because it's like tautology, the same thing. I was like, the scripture is supposed to be a spiritual book. Why are we using literary means to interpret it? So that's why it's contradictory to so many people. And it's... Um, Confusing to so many people. Praise the Lord. Amen. I pray the Lord will give us understanding. So, in fact, <laughs> I thank God I was able to make you know that class because each time I was going, I would just be praying like, Lord, give me grace to go through these <laughs> two hours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we also use softwares. Yes. Human means dictionary, concordance, those things will help us a little bit. They will only interpret letters, not the spirit of the word, you know? And we also look for, most pastors will look for interpretations, you know, other preachers' interpretations. Without seeking the face of God, the Holy Spirit himself will inspire the word. Praise the Lord. So we need a lot of uh, prayer and study, diligent study of the scripture to understand the scripture. Praise the Lord. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without the oil of the Spirit, you know, keeping our fire burning in prayer, in studying of the word of God, we'll just be a motivational speaker. 
Yes, motivational speaker. And the Bible will be contradictory. Praise the Lord. So we need time in prayer and fasting, diligent fasting, just like the apostle. We need to wait upon the Lord. Sometimes we don't understand it, but we must believe it. Many people want to understand the scripture before they obey it. No. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. When you hear it, you believe it. Even when you don't understand. Yeah. So many times I've read the scripture over and over again. I wonder the Holy Spirit would just open my eyes to it. But the, the scripture is like a buffet. Delicious food. Yeah, that's some we like. Oh, this is this tastes very good. But when you taste some other, mmm, that's bitter, that's sour, but they are good for your spiritual health. And also in a buffet, you have meal for children. You also have meals for adults. The same thing. This is our spiritual food. Praise the Lord. So if you're a spiritual baby, you might not understand a lot of things about the scripture. You need time. You need patience. You need perseverance. Continue to read it. Don't give up. Look for mature people to break the word of God down for you as a baby to understand, to be able to know how to, you know, study the scripture through prayer, personal growth in faith too. You need adults to help you, spiritual adults. Yes, praise the Lord. So we need wisdom and understanding of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that, is anybody lacking in wisdom? Let him ask. Yes. So we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, wisdom of God and understanding to understand the scripture. Like the scripture I read, the Bible says that do not, uh, Proverbs 26, 4, 7, it said, answer, the first part said, do not answer, um, let me read it again. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. That has happened to me. There was uh, a friend you know, she was really angry at me and she was just ranting. She was just shouting, you know, just cursing me, saying a lot of words. And the Lord just told me, just keep quiet. And I didn't say anything. When she finished, she went away. And she was shocked that I didn't even say anything. That really shocked her. So praise the Lord. That is the scripture fulfilled. The second part said, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. There had been a time a guy, he was like scorning my faith. Like you, you are a Christian, you must be living a boring life. <laughs> By the time I was done giving him testimony of miracles of God in my life, places God has taken me to, what God has done in my life, he was like, oh, you have the most beautiful life. And the joy of the Lord radiating in my life, at a point it was like trying to get closer to me. I was like, no. Nope. <laughs> Just, I kept him at a distance because he was trying to like, you know. You see? So, we need the prompting of the Holy Spirit, the direction of the Holy Spirit to know what to, how to apply the scripture. To understand the scripture, praise the Lord. I pray that the Lord will help us. As we grow in our scriptural, uh, spiritual life, in our faith, to study the scripture with prayer. We need prayer to understand it. Yes, even as we obey the word of God to God, we guide us. Praise the Lord. In all wisdom. God bless you. I hope you have been blessed. Stay in prayer. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, now is the time. You need to come to light. Repent of your sins. Ask for forgiveness. Believe in Jesus, the Lord and Savior. And follow him with all of your heart. God bless you.